Can you see? Can you see? Am I am I doing it right? Oh, I I didn't even know I have such a vocals. I mean, I didn't even know that my voice is capable of such a cool vocal stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Peter, and this is the next episode of Future Bass Track from Scratch. Um, so we've made an intro, uh, we've made a build up, and we've made a drop so far. So here we have a breakdown, uh, and then we'll do another build up. Actually, we can copy the same build up from here and do another drop the second drop will be a little bit different than the first one because I, I don't want to make it very repetitive so i'm gonna make a different second drop uh, and maybe some something else in in intro because it's pretty boring i feel like these vocals are not in key or out of tune a little bit but it's labeled b sharp uh, b flat major and we are in in major as well yeah we are in f sharp major so it should work if we transpose this now i want to do like a build up and the second drop Oops. So yeah, that's what I would do, but that's just an arrangement thing. I put it here to actually know uh, what am I what am I going for, and here I'm gonna play something like a, a second verse, and then again a build up, and then there's gonna be the drop. So I know which elements in which place I should put. I think that makes sense. Oh, so, some of you told me to uh, put a auto filter on these drums. That may be a good idea, actually, and open a filter like so. Yeah, but then we have to get rid of this. Um, If you have low pass filter, you actually like you should leave something on the top. So, for example, when I added a auto filter to this, actually there's um, there's a filter opening as well these chords, and it was opening these uh, vocal chops. So, if you won't do that, you basically will leave uh, like the top end on. On the audio spectrum will be just quiet, like if, if you put just a low cut here. Uh, so you may want to leave some frequencies on the top to actually feel some spaces on the top to make it sound in generally better. Yeah, like when you make song, you should actually feel the, the whole frequency spectrum, especially in drop. So we want to make sure that the frequency spectrum is filled with frequencies, the whole frequency spectrum. In the, like an intro or somewhere else, you can actually leave some frequencies empty, like like here maybe. We don't need so much top end or, or bass is here. Uh, the sub bass comes there. Yeah, that's in, in, in our case we can add a little bit more of the bass but it's 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 not a mixing state it's we're arranging right now so we'll worry about that later tension we have we have tension in a drop obviously and then kind of like this this breakdown it's decreasing the tension level so when you when we go from like from this build up which uh, from this breakdown which is not very hard hitting to this kind of chill part it's very nice transition and then we are not going uh 
Direct clip to build that. We could actually. We're going to the verse and then we are we are building a tension here. Uh yeah, so I wanna add some. Yeah, we can put them as well. Uh, I changed a little bit the filler cutoff automation on these drums because it actually should kind of like be completely open in this place. So I just did it. Um, and as well, I, I have kind of like an idea to second drop. Uh, I'll just basically copy this and change a bunch of elements. Basically, I want to add an LFO tool to the whole group. Uh, you can actually, if you don't have LFO tool, you can use auto pen. You can do L L LFO stuff here. If you put the safe face to zero. Uh, I think I'm gonna change the rhythm a little bit. Same thing here. Yeah, and the same thing here. Oh, because the kick is in a different place. Um. switch to LFO tool actually. What is happening? Why is it delayed? We need LFO tool as well on bases. So I'm gonna drag it. I'm gonna make a. Oh wait, what, what's what's this? Yeah, I'm gonna make a group. No, god damn it! I <laughs> I moved this. Huh. And the same thing here. Do 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 like this and ding. Yeah, when you use LFO tool, usually the volume kind of decreases. Uh, I'm gonna try and bring it back. Mm -hmm. 
Let's keep it. Oh, wait, what's happening? Hmm. Huh. Okay, so uh, this sound isn't isn't interesting so much. Uh, so I'm gonna just change the sound. Maybe instead I'm gonna automate the rever reverb. Mix. Okay, it seems sounds pretty solid. Okay, it's simply the uh, LFO two works. Okay, so I I think we we almost finished our song. I'm gonna actually add locator here. Breakdown. It's gonna be the outro. Uh, yeah, so I opened Ozone 8 to do a little bit of the mastering. So uh, I think it's like the levels, it's pretty nice balanced. Um, how much headroom do we have? <coughs> Yeah, it's like 6 dB of the headroom, uh, which is a standard, so I'm gonna master this song. So, um, in Ozone you have a lot of options here. Uh, I usually have Equalizer Dynamics, uh, which is a um, multi-band compressor, and then I usually put Imager before Maximizer, and the Maximizer, because it's a limiter, you put at the end of your chain. You can as well put things like Dynamic EQ, which I sometimes do, if I have some annoying stuff I can just compress that so uh, I start with dynamics and I listen to the first band second band and so on and I just adjust the settings yeah so uh, at the bottom here you can see the gain reduction so I usually aim for like minus two to minus three of gain reduction gain reduction <coughs> so it's fine and then we have a mid low band yeah 
Ja. It should not have a level 2 on it. Okay, and then we have uh, Imager. So I use it basically to bring the bass to mono, and I think we already have this. Yeah, and, and it does work nicely. And on this band I usually put to like 20 of the stereo width, and here like 15 or 10, and then 15. And it's pretty wise. So uh, last thing is a maximizer. I usually again put ceiling on minus 0 0.5 to actually have like a little bit of the headroom because I guess that's what it is. That's what it is for like SoundCloud for example. If you upload something to SoundCloud, I mean I don't know how is it now but like a couple of uh, years ago, like two years ago, when I uploaded a song into SoundCloud, it sounded really bad because the SoundCloud has to compress your track, so it kind of do some stuff. I don't know, but it, like I just keep it here. So. I feel like we, we are missing some frequencies here, which is a uh, 250 region.
okay so like this video is not the best for me i i'm not talking very much here but anyways uh we finished this song i guess um i think so we finally finished this series i think in my opinion it's a pretty nice track i'm gonna put this on on, on my soundcloud i guess uh I, i'll do probably a little bit a little tweaks here here and there because I may find something I don't like, so I'm gonna change it. But that's pretty finished song. Uh, we did mixing, kind of like um, on, a, on a go. Uh, we've mixed drums at the beginning. Uh, then we adjusted the volume of everything else that it matches other elements. Uh, yeah, and I think that it, it sounds pretty nice. I'm gonna as well reference this song with some other tracks to make sure that the the frequency balance is right so thank you for being here you can probably while this episode is out you can probably find this song uh, on my soundcloud which is soundcloud.com slash aiden williams and yeah thank you for being here thank you for watching this series i'll definitely do something more from scratch uh, but a little bit later now i want to focus on some other videos so that's all for this video as well as series. Okay, so again, thanks for watching and see ya in the next videos.